All right, so I found me a quiet place, and uh, kids are all downstairs doing their own thing, and I figured I'd bang through some Q&A. Uh, I said I'd try my best to get to it, so as your questions roll in, whether a message, online, whatever, I'll try to sort through them as long as they're not too fucking stupid and we can actually get to it. Um, I'll try to make some videos about this and answer them as detailed some of these questions I could make a whole video about in itself. I'll try to give it the gunshot approach and just, you know, very broad move along. Um, but there's a few on here that I could make a whole video about by themselves. All right. So the first one, I like this one. Is it necessary to swear so much in your videos? I mean, necessary is like, you know, uh, is necessary to breathe. But for me, yes, yes it is. Because it's like, have you ever watched Pulp Fiction or Goodfellas on a cable program where they take all the swears out? It loses all of its oomph. You know what I mean? It's like it loses its impact. The content I'm bringing, I feel like, is the prime rib. Whether it's jokey, fun, informational. But primer by itself is like, meh. You get some salt, some pepper, some rosemary, whatever the hell you guys do with prime rib. For me, sometimes swearing, depending on the context, is like a... Uh, it's like a fucking emerald walked in the house and was like, BAM! So, uh, yes. Uh, the, way, the, the thing I said about this channel is I will keep it as if I was talking to you in front of you. If we were at a group table and I would talk, I don't try to think about how I come across so people can like me the most. I give you what I'm going to give you. So, moving on. Are biceps important? Uh, yeah, this is something that I heard when I was coming into the game that they were like, you know, they made a pecking order of sorts of what's most important. And 16, almost 17 years later in the sport, I've come to realize that, that pecking order is, they're all reliant on each other. So of course they're like a hand, a wrist, and so grows the tree. But I think all of those are bullshit without each other because when you get to the elite level, if you have a glaring weakness or any weakness, it will be exposed. Um, and when you think about an arm wrestling match, right? The end of the day, whether it's by leverage of like bending your wrist back, climbing out on your fingers, uh, putting, you know, the right leverages down on your wrist to leverage your bicep, you do end up getting pinned to some degree by your bicep angle being opened. And in my theory, if you had an infinitely strong bicep, you couldn't be pinned, even if your hands was garbage. Um, cause think about it a few years ago, the guy who was world recognized as the best in the world just so happened to be the strict curl world champion food for thought. He wasn't doing anything particularly great. I mean, he had a great wrist and a good hand, but he would just go and people couldn't budge him past there. So it's food for thought. And as a guy, even when I went through my shoulder issues and my side pressure was down to zero, I still had a hand, I still had a wrist, but I had to fall back on my bicep a lot to let people fade, to, to protect myself. Now, of course, there were guys that were super, super elite that falling to a defense, uh, defensive position wasn't as good, but do I think it's necessary? Oh, fuck yeah. When I'm on my game, if my bicep is stronger, I am much more dangerous. You cannot be pinned if your bicep gets strong enough. And I, I've taken all the bad positions, all the grips, let people hammer away on me, and simply because they couldn't break through my arm barrier, I want to match. So yeah, I think it's very important considering that that's the thing holding that joint from opening up to a pin. I could go on to bicep training, but I think that'll be a separate video. Uh, so we'll stay tuned for that one. Best matches in arm wrestling today. Uh, I like this one. Cause I'm gonna go uh, away from the norm of what everyone thinks should happen. Of course we have Levon, 
in Michael. <sighs> this is one of those things, right, where you find yourselves, do I be politically correct or do I say what I'm thinking and keeping it true? I don't know why, but that match doesn't do it for me. I think Levon's got a flatness to him. And I think stylistically, the match doesn't excite me. And the tear with the leagues and all the garbage around it, um, for me, it just doesn't excite me. Um, there's so much contrast there and how they are as pullers and how they are as people. And I mean, they couldn't be more different. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't know how to make it more different. And I don't know, it just doesn't tickle my fancy. Like, I don't feel peaked on that. And I, I you know, hey, I'm sorry if this puts a negative uh, light on you guys getting a big payday to pull that match, but it doesn't excite me. Um, I think there's so many good athletes out there. Um, I would like to see, I remember in, uh, I think it was uh, Zlati, Marcio and Ongarbaev had a great center table match that I believe one of them, I think Marcio followed out at. I'd like to see that. Um, I think one that really has to be answered, not just because it's my channel. I think being the dominant guy in North America for years and Todd having his run, I do think that a premier match on any stage in any arena would be me and Todd Hutchings. Um, I think anything that uh, John Brzezink would do if he came out of retirement, as well as, um, let's see, I think, I think, I think a Devin uh, and Travis left-handed redo. Uh, I don't know what Devin's left hand is. I don't know where he is, but considering their time frames of having such like that Devin that showed up to pull Wagner, ooh, I like that. Uh, and, and there's probably many more, uh, but I'm not sticking with the cliche of immediately. Now that match might be a top five, top ten match, but if you ask me to make my favorite, my top three, it's not quite there for the reasons of just how I explained it, okay? All right, uh, okay, so this is touching on my my leg. Aren't you worried if your legs are weak besides the aesthetic? No, not at all. Um, and that's why I don't really work them, is because my job was to carry heavy shit all day. I've actually had guys who prided themselves on being leg specialists come work with me, and they couldn't handle carrying their own fucking body weight up a ladder all day, never mind the shit that I needed them to carry. So on top of that, um, when I was living in Vegas, I was lined up to go to an NFL combine and my 40 yard dash time and my vertical jumps were at like the very, very top of the NFL combine. So yes, uh, to look at them, they're skinny, but the power output and uh, health of them you know, hey, genetics. It, it's the same thing that gives me big hands and forearms is the same thing that gave me skinny legs, but they they perform better than you'd expect. And uh, no, I'm not I'm not at the point where I'm chasing aesthetics. Uh, you got to be master of one craft, right? You can't be strong, world's best arm wrestler, fitness model, fucking. Oh, listen, I'm lucky if I can get one right. So fuck legs, but they're strong. They can, they can move. I can move. Was the chicken choking a, a true story? Yeah, yeah, dude, my dad is a fucking animal. He's a funny ass dude and he's got a lot of really colorful stories and you gotta understand he grew up in a time of the 60s, and he was uh, 70s and, you know, 80s. I don't know when he slowed his roll. He never did. He's still on a roll. Um, but he was a mixture of wild but very likable, and that included the uh, police and everyone in the area. So there were never any hard repercussions came his way. But uh, truth be told, the Chicka Choker stories, a uh, very PG version of a lot of his stories. And I could, I could just sit down and write like a... A, a, a novel series of things I've seen, witnessed, done with that man, and it's it's all true. And he was that strong where he snapped a Jack Daniels bottle. 
and he was that crazy to actually go to a stranger's farm and attempt to buy their prized breeder just so he could kill it. <laughs> uh, can't pick your family, I guess, right? Uh, why do you rage? Well, I can tell you, um, I do. I rage because I think in years past, for different reasons, there's a, a level of self-doubt. And the darkest voice in my head, it, it's not all the naysayers, it's not all the people saying, uh, you know, that I can't. It's me saying I can't, me worried. So when I do something that I think I can't do, it like is an explosion of so many hormones and you know, it's not, it's not juice rage, it's not trend rage, it's not, I'm a person like that. If you ever sat down and watched me play Fortnite, you would understand what I am talking about. Cause I, I go off the fucking deep end with some of these hacks that I play with and I would think I'm okay, but I'll tell you what, I go off the fucking deep end with some of these people. I'm a competitive person. I like to compete. And uh, that's everything. It's, it's, it's cornhole, it's flip cup, it's fucking foot racing, and, and especially arm wrestling. So yeah, um, the rage is real. It's not staged. It's not me being disrespectful to my opponent. Actually, when I rage, it's a compliment because that means the person I'm pulling has had me in an uncomfortable position. In, in how I feel about myself. You'll see me pull the tournaments and I'll go through the whole tournament. I'll go like this, bam, and I'll go, bam. And in my mind, I expected myself to do that. It's the people who put me off balance and make me feel weird that all of a sudden it brings this emotion out of me like it's a release of a demon or a devil. Like, I cast you out of here, motherfucker. So yeah, um, the rage is real. But it's not an aggression towards anyone else. It's more of my uh, my battles with myself. All right. Highest gripper level I've ever closed. Um, I got some Gillingham grippers here that I got years back that I think some of them are really high and really hard. I have to look at the numbers. I don't want to say something false, but I remember I closed a big one. Um, I've done a four on more than one occasion. And the MASH Monster, when you see me on the MASH Monster list, I did, um, so I did a COC4, and I did on the MASH Monster list, I did a 3, but at the time, I stopped there. I didn't fail at any other grippers. At the time, they weren't making any. And that's right around the time I started drifting into arm wrestling, and I fell in love with arm wrestling. So I actually never tried a gripper level higher than the 3. I never, I never sought it. It took too long. And uh, I had moved on by then. But um, that level can be misleading because you'll see people that are doing like a 7, an 8, a 9. I don't even know how high it goes. I haven't checked. But at the time, nobody else did the 3 for a long time. So when I did it, I kind of just said, well, I guess I'm the mash monster. Call it a day. Get to arm wrestling. Go do my thing. And uh, yeah, I moved on. But I've done... I'd have to check the Gillingham gripper. It was a big one, and I've done a four. So certified on none of them, and you know what? If you're young and you're watching this video, record your shit if you can do cool shit because you think you're going to be able to do it forever, and it's not always the case. For me, my hand is stronger in an arm wrestling way. Like, I can grab people in an arm wrestling way stronger, but I can't do some of the other things I used to do from the grip world because my hand strength, direction, and focus has changed. So I don't fuck around with things that are non-conducive. So you think that uh, you're gonna have it forever? Record your shit, which is part of this whole, um, why I kicked off this YouTube. It's it's almost like a online diary. You never know, life is crazy how it works out. So record your shit. Uh, is your anxiety still an issue? Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not like it was. I, I had a big battle with anxiety that really crippled me for uh, a lot of years. And it, it made decisions on where I flew, what I did, how I did it. And th the biggest monkey I ever had to fight was that one. And that's something that I think is one of the ones that I'll delve deeper into. I mean, I've done everything from 
I got a story about how I almost crashed a plane on the way into Vegas at Arm Wars. And then I had to like check myself into a hospital. And if anyone's had severe anxiety or panic attacks, I tell you what, that's right up there with any kind of fucked up trip you could think about being on in the, in the drug world. Because if you've got a strong mind that, that can work for you, it can work against you. And uh, that's one I like to touch on uh, deeper. But uh, when I say it's an issue, uh, it's not what it was back then. And that's what I would explain in the video that would come is I hit a peak that was so high that when I survived it, because <laughs> I was sure I was dead, it almost like gave me confidence and everything got easier. And it, it, it's not even like a, what makes you anxious? I mean, it, it, once you get anxiety attacks, mm, you start realizing that sometimes there's no pinpoint. There's no, at least for me, there wasn't like, oh, I had rent due or I wasn't working or whatever. It was, I don't know. Sometimes you just get fucked up. It's called life. Heavyweights, question mark. Will I ever go up there? Of course, uh, I would like to. It all depends on the event and, um, where my best interests are. So there was a time that I felt I was the best 200 pounder in North America and I moved up and I didn't necessarily gain more weight, but I just moved up because I wanted to see where I was at. But if you're in a tournament that they're offering super match formats and they're giving you guys your size and you know, it's easy to put the cruise control on and face guys in your lane. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I've mentioned to uh, WAL in the past and even promoters in the past that I would pull some of the guys that are on the heavyweight roster. And I have no problem with that. I got no problem. Uh, I kind of know what that arena feels like. I kind of know what they're bringing to the table. And yeah, there's a curiosity to see as, as I go on my own journey progressing where I fall in that pecking order. All right, and this is number 10, Dubai. Do I think Larry would benefit from my approach? You know, yeah, I do. Um, I see he's not able to access a lot of his power and, and until I would ever grab him, I don't know what his wrist feels like or his hand is capable of. I do see, when I talk about the hand control video, I do see that, um, the gauge he has there is a guy who's very hand heavy and uh, top arm heavy in Khaled. So Larry can never feel like he's progressing. And like I said in my other video that I think that true dominating snatched up control, not through a strap, not through, you know, trickery, true dominating, snatched the fuck up hand control is very, it's not common, it's rare, and it's its lost. But I think he might be able to do it, and he would see the contrast with him and Khaled. Uh, he would see that whole encounter very differently. And uh, would I go to Dubai? Uh, my phone's not ringing yet. I, I've learned something about saying never that when they say never say never, it's true. You could say there's something you you won't do, you can't do, and this and that, and then just sometimes just, man, what a difference a day makes. So, um, you know, they're doing great things out there in Dubai. Uh, I think Larry's doing great things for the sport, but I do think uh, a different approach is needed. Something a little more comprehensive, something more suited for him. That's what I said about best advice for beginners. You got to, uh, it's individualized, this sport. You can't, there's no, there's no broad, like, this is good for everybody that's built like you. This is good for everybody that's built like you. So, uh, based on what I've seen him struggle with and where I've seen him be strong, in my opinion, yeah, I, I could help him. But, uh, you know, that'll only bring you so far. Help is, is help. Gotta want it. So, that's... 10 questions I've banged through. And uh, you know, there, there's plenty more. Some of these I'd like to make a whole video out of. And you know, feel free to throw the comments in, send me a message, 
Let's talk about, dude, it's easy. Ask me, ask me whatever the fuck you want to ask me. I'm an open book. You know, as long as you're not like rude or disrespectful to like my family. If you want to talk about the sport, you want to talk about me, you want to have some fun with it. Let's hit it. So I'm pretty, I'm an, I'm an open book. I'm honest. I'll do whatever. I'll sit down. I'll flip through it. I'll drink my favorite fermented grape beverage, boxed beverage of choice. And I will mull it all over and I'll just spit the fucking truth. And again, if you can't handle the truth, then what the fuck are you even doing here?